Swift uses structs for nearly all its built-in types of data. That's things like int, double, boolean, string, array, and many more, all built using structs. But we have a second way to create our own custom types of data called classes. Classes have some things in common with structs, but they differ from structs in five key ways. Understanding the similarities and differences will help you make the most of structs and classes in your own code. First up, the similarities. Easy one, you can create and name your class and structs as you please. Second, you can go ahead and add properties, methods, property observers, access control, and more to both structs and classes. And third, you can create custom initializers to configure new instances of your types however you want. Those are the similarities. Let's look at the five differences. First up, you can make one class build upon functionality from another class, a process called inheritance. You'll inherit all the methods and properties from the parent class. And if you want to, you can override them selectively. Second up, because of that first point, Swift will not automatically make for us a memberwise initializer. It's just too complicated. This means you either need to have your own custom initializers or provide your properties with default values so initializers aren't needed. Third up, if you copy an instance of a class, both copies point to the same piece of data. If you change one, the other one changes as well. Fourth, when the final copy of your class instance is destroyed, Swift can optionally call a special function called a deinitializer, freeing up any resources we'd allocated. And finally, even if you make a class instance constant, you can still go in and change its properties as long as they are declared as variable. Now, on the surface, these changes probably seem fairly random, and there's a good chance you're thinking, do I really need classes and structs at the same time? The thing is, Swift UI uses classes extensively, mainly because of point three. All instances of a class share the same data. Change one, they both change. This is particularly important for UI, where if you imagine a, a screen where the user edits their name, you want that name to take place and change across other parts of your application as well. The other points, they're important too, they matter, but they're of varying use. For example, being able to build one class based on another is, is neat. It's clever. You can get a long way with that. And it was really important in Apple's older UI framework, UIKit, but it's much less common in Swift UI apps. In UIKit, it was common to have long class hierarchies where class E was built on class D, D is built on C, B, D, A, da, 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 up and up and up. And it's all inheritance all the way down. And it would mean that E gained all the properties and methods from D, which gained its from C, which gained its from B and its from A. And you can imagine here, if, if A has three properties and B inherits from A and adds its own properties, three more say, you've now got six properties. If C adds three and inherits from B, you've now got nine properties and 12 and 15, da -da -da. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And in UIKit, there are some fairly sizable classes inheriting all sorts of functionality from their parent classes. And this gives you an idea of why memberwise initializers just don't work in Swift for classes because they'd be too complicated. E would have, you know, 15 parameters being passed in. It'd be very complicated. And of course, you, if you added one property to A, that would be required for B, C, D, and E to add. So it'd break all those automatically made initializers. It'd be difficult to handle. Uh, being able to change a constant values variables links into the idea of multiple copies of data. If you think about us having a, a pot of data in our app here, and we'll say, listen, let's put that in a, in a, a, a variable called A. If we copy A, we don't get a unique copy of its data we get the thing pointing at the same data pot. And copy it again, same data pot. Copy it again, same data pot. And so it doesn't matter if B is constant and C is variable and D is constant, none of that matters. 
because if they're properties inside a variable, they can still change. So let's say B, C, and D are all constant, but the properties are variables, and A is a variable. A could say, you know, I'm gonna change the data here, and it'll update the underlying data. But because B, C, and D all point to the same data pot ultimately, they will also change. They weren't constant at all. And that's how it works. This is why variable and constant class behaves differently from a variable and constant struct. Also, because one instance of a class, this data at the bottom here, can be referenced in various places, it becomes important to know when the final copy is destroyed. So if A goes away, and B goes away, and C goes away, and D goes away, there's now nothing pointing to our data anymore. And that's where the D initializer comes in. It allows us to clean up any resources that we allocated when that final copy is destroyed. It's no longer needed. Do what you want to do. Now, before we're done, I want to look at a tiny slice of code that creates and uses a class over an Xcode. Let's say there's a class called game with a property called score, default value of zero. I had a did set property observer saying print score is now score. Then at the end, I'll say var new game oops, equals game, new game dot score plus equals 10. And that code works great. Gay with capital G even. <laughs> Works great with a capital letter, of course. There we go. Score is now 10. Great. The only difference between this class here and a struct is the word class. We could literally just change this to be struct game and it will work just as well. There is no difference here. And that might make classes seem redundant. But trust me, all five of their differences matter. And I'll be going into more detail on these five differences in the following videos. But right now, the most important thing you've got to know is that structs are important and so are classes. And you will, you will need both when you build apps with SwiftUI.